Welcome to My Hometown, the program that explores clubs, organizations, businesses, and issues across Nassau and Suffolk counties and sheds light on the different towns that are making a difference. A great day to you and welcome to another edition of My Hometown on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. I'm your host, Bill Horan, along with Nassau Community College student, Zach Turkel. Our special guest today is Bob Shanlin, a local resident of North Belmore, who was not officially announced as of this date to run for New York's 4th Congressional District election in 2018. The incumbent heading into the election in 2018 is Democrat Kathleen Rice, who was first elected in 2014. Bob is a retired corrections officer and feels he's qualified to run for New York's 4th Congressional District located in the eastern part of the state, which includes a portion of Nassau County. Bob, welcome to my hometown. Thank you. Bob, why are you running for the 4th Congressional District? Because my country was conquered by a combination of the Russians and a sociopathic thief who they co-opted with money and bribery. Um... There's been great damage done to the American electorate through fake media, fake news by Fox for many years. And Hillary Clinton's great mistake was referring to Trump's voter base as a basket of deplorables and then apologizing for telling the truth. And we need someone who's going to tell it like it is. And you feel you're that person? Absolutely. Okay. Now, you're running on a historic campaign in that you are not taking money from anyone. That's correct, right? Yes. How could you possibly win? By doing as many interviews as I can here, making 150 phone calls to individuals a day. The average congressman spends five to six hours a day selling their vote and raising money on the phone. I'm talking to individual people, not selling my vote on the phone. Bob, doing things, though, on your own. We talked about this before the show. Um... Uh, just the simplest things, those little signs we see on neighbors' lawns, maybe balloons, pens, um, whatever politicians give out to remind people of their name to be seen. So if, if, you're, if you don't take any contributions, e- either you don't have those or uh, any expense for that literally has to come out of your pocket. Is that correct? That's correct, and there won't be any lawn signs, there won't be any radio commercials, and there won't be any TV ads. This so we better a, listen closely today. <laughs> absolutely. This is a no-money campaign, and that's the point. We're not a functioning democracy at this point. We're an oligarchy, by, for, and of the rich, as the tax bill shows. I'm giving the American people a chance to set an example here for the rest of the country, the people in Nassau County, to become a democracy. To vote for the guy who didn't sell you out. Okay. Well, Bob, why do you think this country is an oligarchy? We have a legalized system of bribery as a form of government. You can buy any law you want, no matter how insane and damaging it is. If the Citizens United stands, which says that money is free speech, that horrible Supreme Court ruling, then there are very few people in this country who have the right to free speech because most people cannot compete with that. Coming into this political election now that you're going into, what do you think is the major challenges to us as a country? First and foremost, we have to deal with global warming. It's the, if we don't, in not too long, Long Beach is going to be a short beach and then an underwater <laughs> sandbar. I like that uh, sound bite. Great, ca- great comparison yeah. there. <laughs> in, in 1974, I stood on the beach in Long Beach and I said that we should plaster all those six and eight story buildings lining the beach with solar panels, paint wi- little windmills different colors and put them on the roof. Call them works of art, not eyesores. We'd set an example for the country, and your energy costs would come down. Instead, a half a century later, we're still arguing about putting windmills out at sea. You lose power in transmission. The technology's come a long way, but we have to do it on a much larger basis. Instead, because of the bribery system... Trump is in the process of opening up all of our natural lands to drilling and mining. Bob, I looked at your website, and Sandy is basically a warning for Long Beach. You think the next hurricane that that will be coming to Long Beach, and it might happen in the future, do you think it's going to be worse than Sandy? 
it's not what I think. It's what every expert in the field tells you. The scientists tell you that the ice caps are melting, the seas are rising, and this is pretty predictable. There's more energy in the system because heat holds uh, is held by water more than air, and you're going to get bigger, stronger hurricanes more frequently. Well, what do you think about the three hurricanes that hit Texas, um, Florida, and Puerto Rico? Do you think those are wake-up calls? Maria, Irma, and Harvey? How many wake-up calls do you need? We've had more. There are more coming. Of course there are. I mean, hurricanes, they don't sleep unless they're (laughs) in the (laughs) wintertime. Absolutely. Yeah. Bob, how do you, you know, it's very interesting because I'm thinking back in 1970, if you said solar panels and windmills, they probably just waved at you and said, you know, go down the block or or go play in the sand or something. But today we're seeing that, of course, you you can drive around my neighborhood. I see the solar panels out. I have solar panels on my house. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So that's living proof. Zach Turkel right here. Exactly. Solar panels on his house. Mm -hmm. But how do you combat it and how can you get the people to work with you to change some of these things? How do you combat global warming, you mean? Yeah, from your position, how you know what could you do to help that? Well, one thing I've never heard anyone in Congress discuss is the fact that animals causes more global warming than all the cars in the world combined. <laughs> we eat a huge number of animals in this country. I think it's about $9 billion a year. If we make people, uh, not make people, but educate people so they make their own decisions and move towards healthier diets, they're going to be more vegans, there'll be less animals eaten, your cancer rates will drop, you'll have less need for health care, diabetes goes down, there are all sorts of other benefits, and global warming gets addressed. At the same time, we have to develop the clean renewables. We need a Manhattan Project to develop clean renewables. There won't be a single magic bullet in all probability. You're talking about tidal when you're on a coastline. You're talking windmills where possible, You're uh, particularly in the Midwest. You're talking about solar panels. And, and all those, uh, that part makes a lot of sense to me. It certainly does. Especially being near Long Beach or Short Beach or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Bob, what laws would you pass to end the current system right now? The first law I would propose is that any politician that takes a bribe while in office, elected office, at any level, goes to jail for life. Period. If you can't handle the heat and you don't want to serve the public, don't run for office. The state of Indiana, uh, Illinois, yeah, excuse me, has had four governors go to jail in the last four decades. That's nuts. Look at our history in Nassau County. Uh, Republican Chairman Joe Maggiato went to jail. Now you have a parade of Republicans going to jail. It's a whole family affair with them. So it's, you, wait, go, no, go ahead first. And just It's basically a rite of passage in the Republican Party. So why do you think all Republicans are going to jail? Aren't there some Democrats that do break the law sometimes? Of course there are. Yeah. And they should be held at the same standard. Exactly. Okay. Now, Bob, what as... as um the congressional p- position in New York's 4th District. What can you do, though? Everybody has limitations on what they can do. I mean, we would all like to... Uh, certainly what you're saying makes sense to me and, and many of these changes, but for one person to bring them about, or even a, a team, or even uh, several politicians, that's a, a great big effort. What do you feel you could do that you could actually bring about some changes? Never doubt that a small group of committed people can affect real change. That's the only thing that ever has. What you can do is set an example. What you can do is start that conversation. What you can do is propose a law like the one I just discussed and either get it passed or make them vote against it. Because how do you justify voting against it? Okay, no, very good point. Okay. How important do you think this law needs to be passed? Do you think it needs to go to the Supreme Court or maybe make it a new amendment? Are you really wanting this to happen? Uh, yes, I want this to happen. And as far as the Supreme Court goes, you only go to the Supreme Court when a law is challenged through the court system. You don't start the Supreme Court making a law. That's not the way it works. Exactly, yeah. But the thing is, is that... There are going to be some people that are not going to be in favor of that law. Of course, there are not going to be people that are going to be in favor. What do you plan on doing to fix that problem? It's about starting the discussion with the public. You have to have enough people who won't vote for someone who's not going to support that law. You shouldn't listen to a politician's speeches 
to determine what he's going to do in office. Just look at his list of donors. That's going to tell you what he does when he's in office. It always has. <laughs> That's a good rule. I'm going to check that out now. I like that. Definitely, Bill. Bob, you've always been in law enforcement. Now, what do you see that could be done to help the problems? We're hearing so much of unequal treatment by the law enforcement community. Um, are there some, especially as an insider and someone who's been there, done that, mm-hmm. uh, I think your voice would be very important, just like listening to the quarterback I listened to this morning talking about sports. So what could you tell us about that? Well, when you're talking about unequal treatment, are you referring to race? Race or for any reason. If, if, you know, I mean, that seems to be the biggest one we see in the papers, but there could be other reasons. Sexual maybe. harassment, sexual other harass- stuff like anything, that. Yeah. Well, but, <laughs> as far as sexual harassment goes, we have laws on the books. We have to enforce them. That's, you know, I, I don't think we need that I've heard of any specific set of laws changed on that. But I'd be open to any ideas. As far as race goes, the first thing we have to do is acknowledge a problem. Racism is going to be with us as long as it is politically useful. It's been a major plank in the Republican Party platform since LBJ signed the Civil Rights Act in 1964. Reagan used it openly in his political campaigns. Bush Sr. used it openly in his political campaigns. Tom Gulotta ran for Nassau County Executive and used it openly in his political campaigns, and he won. And now with Trump, of course, we've gone to Nazi levels. Why do you think Trump is making this country like a fascist country? Because I don't see that happening. Um, He ran openly as a racist because you have to have a distraction and get people to blame someone else for their troubles. It's very popular to use Muslims for that in this country, and he's gone full on with that. He does much more than the usual dog whistle racism against blacks now, and he intends to run full on with the ignorant public that's been hearing that from Sean Hannity for years. Bob, uh, uh, one of the big things, by the way, to our audience, if you're just tuning in, our guest today is Bob Shanlin. He's a resident of North Belmore, who has not officially announced as of this state to run for New York's fourth congressional district election in 2018. But I think he wants to do it, and I think he will be running. So he'll be running. He'll be running. Um, I want to go back to your previous question and add something. Okay. You talked about the problems at the jail. What you have to acknowledge is that there is a problem with racism in our law enforcement community and not use the old bromide that it's just a few bad apples. It's not. It's the system that's rotten. You start that with screening at hiring time, first and foremost, and then training, training, and more training. It seems like a good... uh uh, addition to it, and certainly something I think we would all agree with that uh, in any in almost any position we 've got to keep that up and and uh, people fall back and if they keep re- being reminded uh, the coworkers will probably help out and keep them on the straight and narrow um, let 's talk a little bit about health care w- what 's your feeling <laughs> on that? Since the 1930s, the American public has wanted a national health care program. Every poll shows it. Uh, we FDR discussed the matter at the time, but it didn't pass. Ronald Reagan, of course, made record albums saying that it would lead to socialism and dictatorship because he was on the payroll to keep it from happening. Um, we have a half a trillion dollar a year parasite in this country called insurance companies. We're the only industrialized country in the world that doesn't guarantee health care as a right to all its citizens. We have to do that. And the insurance companies can go away. Uh, it would drag the cost of health care down greatly. We're by far and away the most expensive system in the world. And we're 37th in the world behind Algeria in quality of health care in this country. <laughs> that sounds <laughs> kind of interesting amazing. that we're behind Algeria. <laughs> now, before we get into anything else right now, we're, we're at that point in the show where we're going to take a brief break from my hometown on the voice of Nassau Community College, WHPC 90.3. Our guest today is Bob Shanlin, a local resident of North Belmore, who has not officially announced as of this day to run for New York's 4th Congressional District in 2018. But hint, hint, I think he's going to. We'll be right back after this brief intermission. <laughs> everybody, Rachel Ray here. Nothing puts a bigger smile on my face than cooking up a big meal for family and friends. But there's not enough room at my table for the 17 million kids in America who are struggling with hunger. These children, that's one out of every five, often have to skip meals because there's just nothing to eat in the kitchen. 
Yet there's more than enough healthy, nutritious food produced right here in America to feed every last hungry.